Hey guys, Keith from Kegland. Today we're talking about our new Mark V regulators. Some of you guys will be familiar with our older model, which was the Mark IV. We've got several new upgrades in the Mark V, which really make the whole regulator easy to use, easy to maintain, and just more reliable in general. So let me get stuck into the features and show you how this regulator is quite different to the ones in the past. So as soon as you look at the regulator, you'll see it now says uh, patented tool free. And we've made this as tool free as possible because who wants to have to go and get a shift up when you can just do the regulator up by hand. Um, if you look at the older regulators like the Mark IVs for instance, or most regulators out there in the market, they require you to do it up with a nut here. And the reason why a nut is really required is because we use fairly hard nylon washers or we did in the past. So these nylon washers, they're a fairly hard compound. They could be quite hard wearing and last a long time. However, from our experience, the reason why these wear out is generally because people over tighten this. So as soon as you put a nut on there and you get people to tighten these up, the temptation is that people get a spanner, get a lot of leverage and they can do it up overly tight and then they damage this nylon washer. So we generally would always ship these with a spare which is zip tied onto the regulator like that. So you've got to back up just in case that one wears out. However, we really thought that it was time for us to address this because that was one of the parts that it's a bit annoying if you happen to be halfway through a party and don't have a spare washer. So what we do now is now with the tool free design, it's all a hand wheel like this. So really easy, don't need any tools and you can do it up like that. And you're probably saying, well, how can I get the torque required to do this up tight enough to seal? And that's because we've changed the spigot design. So if you look at the spigot design, this now uses a much softer compound here. The actual, um, you can see the O-ring is embedded into the, the, the brass spigot here. So if you needed to change this, you could pick it out and then you know, put another one in. But honestly, you should never be able to damage this. Because as you can see, it's got, uh, uh, when you actually do these two parts up together like that, the brass will start to bottom out once you get to the correct level of compression. So you can't really over compress this one easily at all due to how it's designed. Um, being with that uh, softer seal, all you need is to basically do this up by hand like that. And then once you feel a bit of resistance, give it another little half turn and then it's done. So that's now holding pressure. I can turn the cylinder. As you can see, I've got full bottle pressure on that. It's not leaking at all, so fantastic. Um, really, really easy. Look, if you're really weak or for some reason you don't have very good grip, look, you could still get you know, a spanner onto this connection here and tweak it up with the spanner if you really needed to. But really a lot of that temptation for damaging the seal is, has been removed because of this hand wheel on there. So with the Mark V's and the Mark IVs, we have always put the class 2.5 gauge on there. I should make mention to that because a lot of people wanna get, you know, pretty good accuracy on the gauges and the most common other homebrew gauges that you would get out there would be a class three. Look, it's not a massive difference, but when you say class two or three or you know four or five, basically that number relates to its uh, percentage accuracy over the gauge range. So if you've got a gauge that goes up to let's say 100 PSI, then if it's a class three, then you get plus or minus three PSI for the gauge range. So um, if it's a class 2.5, it's slightly more accurate. You're getting you know, plus or minus 2.5% of the gauge range, so 2.5 PSI in that instance. If it has less pressure on the gauge, obviously you get higher accuracy at the lower pressures, but you can't go as high on the regulator. One other thing to note, which some people get a, get, get a bit confused and should be aware of, is you should, the needle should never exceed more than 80% of the gauge range either. So if you're ever getting really high, you should be upgrading to a higher pressure gauge. We do sometimes see people over crank these up. Even I've seen a lot of homebrewers go past the end of the gauge, and then that really damages the cogs inside the gauge as well. So just be aware of that. So the other thing we've upgraded, and I felt this was really important with the Mark V, is the output here. So look, we ummed and art about this because some people find this a bit confusing when you're a new home brewer. And previously we didn't used to put any ball valve to isolate the gas flow on the output. We just used to have this duo type fitting and this would essentially just screw on like that and push the gas line in. So that was it. But we did get a number of customers say they kind of like some of the other brands of regulator because they gave them a ball valve on the output like this. Um, so I know Taprite do this for instance. The other thing was we've integrated a check valve into this ball valve mechanism. So one of the most common areas where a homebrew gauge will get damaged is because liquid ingress coming in through here. If liquid gets in here, it starts to cause corrosion. That corrosion then starts to cause problem with the regulator internally. Now certainly you can take it apart and clean it out, but it's a massive pain. And sadly, a lot of those regulators get liquid inside, end up going to the bin because people can't be bothered, don't, don't have the know-how to fix it or the tools to fix it at home. So, you know, we thought it was important for us to put a check valve in there. 
It's just one thing to remember that obviously, you know, when you're using this regulator, you have to obviously remember to open the ball valve. So when it's in this nine degree, that means off. So no gas is gonna flow out. When you go like that, it's turned on as well. So you can basically turn that on. The other thing we've done is upgraded the duo type fitting. So this is now a metallic duo type fitting. Um, and it comes with an eight millimeter as standard on the regulator. Makes it really, really easy to fit the gas line. So literally all I do is just push that in there and then I'm done. It's giving me a good airtight seal. Uh, being a duo tight fitting, it's also got double O-ring in there as well. So if you take this out, you can see in there, um, we actually use the new Gen 2 duo tight fitting. So these are the Gen 2 fit, duo tight fittings where we put two O-rings with a silicon and EPDM. So you get the best of both worlds with, uh, with regards to its sealing performance. Um, but really the check valve does make a massive difference. It's just something you have to remember that um, you know, if you crank the gas up like this, and if you pull the pressure release valve here, that is only releasing the gas pressure from the check valve upstream. Obviously it can't, you, with the check valve in there, you're not releasing gas downstream in the keg itself. But for that same reason, you don't have that risk of sucking liquid back up in there. So just remember that when you're using it, or if you're a newbie, um, you know, if you need to release pressure from the keg, go and pull the pressure release valve on the top of the keg itself. So let's say I've got like, for instance, this, you know, uh, your oxy bar eight liter keg. I'm gonna pull it here, pull this pressure release valve here, not that one on the regulator. Now, the other reason why it's a tool-free design is really because of the maintenance. So if you were to get one of these older regulators or really any regulator in industry, Home brewers are particularly tough on regulators for a few reasons. Firstly, home brewers are generally using small cylinders like this. Now, if you've ever opened one of these cylinders, it's very common for them to have a little bit of corrosion from the metal inside the cylinder. Now, if you've got a really big cylinder like this, it probably never gets inverted, tipped upside down or something like that. So therefore, all that rust or you know, contamination or aluminum oxide, if it's an aluminum cylinder, will sit at the bottom of the cylinder. It always happens. These cylinders basically don't have a valve taken out for 10 years at a time. So any contamination just sits there. But if you're a home brewer, because you've got a small cylinder, you probably sometimes put it sideways. Sometimes it goes upside down inside the back of a car seat or something like that, you're driving around. And because of the, we're using these small cylinders, the chance of contamination coming out through the cylinder into the regulator is way, way higher. The other thing with home brewers is we're connecting these two things like you know, overly full beer kegs and stuff like that. Some people don't have check valves in place and people are pulling pr pressure release valves like this and often sucking liquid back up into the regulator. Uh, you know, often a big problem as well. The other thing is some people have these regulators in fridges in a high moisture environment. Moisture gets in there, if you get brass corrosion can cause contamination as well. The other last thing as well is when you turn regulators up to full uh, pressure like this and you do forced carbonation and you're increasing and decreasing the pressure, or if you're pulling the pressure release valve and you see that needle jumping up and down, that aggressive use uh, of the regulator where you've got the seat and seat cap internally bouncing up and down has a much, much higher chance of those two brass components wearing off and the bits of bit, small flakes of brass coming through the regulator and getting stuck under the seat and seat cap. So honestly, home brewers are far tougher on regulators than even a lot of commercial um, app, you know, applications where regulators are used. And sadly enough, a lot of those types of instances with contamination, the smallest flake of dirt, rust, you know, aluminum oxide, um, or even you know, liquid getting in there, if it gets under the seat and seat cap, it can cause what we call pressure creep. Now, I don't know if any of you guys have seen this before, but pressure creep is when you essentially set a pressure on the gauge, and then gradually the pressure keeps building and building and building, and then it blows the pressure release valve. So no matter what brand of regulator you got, if moisture gets in there, even it's like, you know, you can get the world's most expensive brand, you're gonna get this problem if liquid gets in there and it's a real nightmare. So typically what you would be required to do is you would required to either mount this to something, somehow get into a vise. Look, we've got this special cradle we use to hold onto this regulator, allowing us to take off the whole bonnet. Now I've already loosened this one so I can just undo it by hand like that. Now, when you take this apart, it's not a job which you know everybody can do, to be honest with you. It's a bit of a pain in the bum. Um, and some people don't have the tools, they don't have the vice at home. And if you're in the field or in a party or an event, you certainly don't have this type of equipment to do this type of job. But it would require you to take this apart, take the bonnet assembly off like that, 
You would then, and this is actually one that has been returned to us. Customers, oh, my regulator's not working. Funnily enough, open it up and there's corrosion everywhere because there's been liquid get inside this regulator. And this is unfortunately quite common. We'd see this from time to time because many, many people don't use check valves. Anyway, I'll take this out. You can see that this whole seat and seat cap assembly has quite a lot of you know, corrosion on it like that. So I'm not sure if you can see in the camera there. I might do a zoom in later. But essentially that corrosion uh, has caused this to essentially become a pressure creep scenario. Now, this one for the customer, they were gonna throw it out, but with the new Mark Vs, they're so much easier to maintain and for this type of issue, which, you know, it's still possible to happen, um, it now can be done in the field with no tools whatsoever. So what we've done is we've actually got um, this uh, knob here and if I unscrew the knob from the front of the regulator you turn it upside down and you can see I've got a handy little M8 or metric uh, eight millimeter hex here and that basically Allen key there is so you can undo the back of the regulator so at the back here instead of us having to remove this whole bonnet which is a real pain and a lot of people didn't have the tools or a cradle or vice to do that you basically just take this off you don't even have to disconnect this from the cylinder obviously if you had it connected to the cylinder you've got to make sure the co2 is turned off but you can basically still have this on the cylinder and within a few seconds i can just undo the back of the regulator like this with that eight millimeter hex or allen key bit you've got under here you use this knob from the front of the regulator and undo this bung so you can see that eight millimeter hole there you basically just uh, go like that and you take the back of the regulator out so really easy no tools required i could do this in the field uh, with really nothing at all uh, a spring's going to fall out like that look if you've got small fingers you can probably just pick this out it is a little bit easier if you have something sharp like a toothpick or something like that then i've got the uh this little seal for that bung which goes on there and then last but not least i've got this part here which is this is what we call the seat cap assembly so this here you can see is made out of an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene and this is the only regulator which i've ever seen where we've designed it the entire seat cap out of ultra high molecular weight pe the reason why we've done this is because if you get other regulators this is usually a brass part now obviously if you've got a brass part which is bouncing up and down inside this hole so you know when you're using a regulator as i was saying home brewers sometimes pull this pressure release valve the needles jumping up and down and stuff like that those types of instances will mean the um, seat and seat cap assembly like this piece here is basically bouncing up and down inside this hole and if you've got brass rubbing up against brass especially if there's any corrosion or contamination around the chance of a tiny flake of brass ending up on this seat cap is way way higher so you know the failure rate when you've got brass on brass rubbing components is much much higher you're much more likely to pressure creep situation and that's sort of unavoidable because that's how all other regulators are made at the moment um, but one thing you can do is to, to greatly reduce the issues is simply go a plastic on brass type of fitting so because it's entirely molded out of plastic when this is rubbing up and down on the inside bore of the regulator the chance of rubbing off a flake of brass is way way less but even in the instance that some bit of brass does get caught on the you know top of the seat cap here it's not going to prevent this from sealing up against the face at the bottom of this hole which means that um, you know it's super easy to clean out so i can basically just take this off and i can clean this off with a bit of a, a cloth or something like that and then just jam it back in there so literally within a few seconds i've put my regulator back together fixed the pressure creep situation without even having to reach for you know a spanner or anything like that from the uh from the workshop so super easy out in the field you could do this with uh, really anything at all and then away you go so screw that on and then go back to the front of the regulator put the knob back in and you know i'm um, back up and running with really hard any fuss honestly that's a 30 second job now a highly recommended accessory for you guys if you're gonna you know get a good regulator is get yourself a gauge guard they're really not expensive and it is such a pain when you damage a gauge we see so many home brewers who buy these gauges like this they put them on a cylinder think oh yeah it's all hunky dory i'm all good uh, they've got a kid that comes along or they trip over a gas line or something like that send this cylinder sideways and boom if this cylinder falls over sideways all that has to do is happen once it's going to damage the gauge a lot of customers at home don't have the tools to really easily change a gauge themselves so look for the sake of like such a cheap you know accessory get yourself one of these gauge guards because they're so cheap to fit we've got stainless steel ones i think on the website we're also thinking about doing these black powder coated steel ones as well um, but they fit onto the gauges like this 
like that. And the other thing is, even with the gauge guard fitted, these new models of gauge guards that we're starting to make now still have that hole at the back of the gauge guard. So you can still, you know, even get access, like take that knob off and get access to the back to service and maintain the seat and seat cap assembly if you needed to. But that just sits on the front. And then you've got these three little screws in here, which you can fit uh, to the back of the regulator. That attaches the gauge guard on here like so. So you have to do these three up like that. And then boom, and boom, boom. And literally, this gauge guard here, it can handle a fairly large whack. So if you've got even a larger six kilo gas cylinder, we tested these gauge guards on the cylinders falling over onto concrete, and the gauges were perfectly fine. So look, small investment, save yourself the headache in the long run. People who think ahead, get the gauge guard. Now before I disappear, I'm also going to say we go to a high level of QC when it comes to these regulators. Every single regulator that you find in a box like this will basically have two tests done it on, on it at least. So firstly we go to one and a half times the working pressure, both on the inlet side and the outlet side to make sure that the gauge holds its uh, you know, maximum pressure. Uh, the other thing we do is a pressure decay test. So we've got a large manifold which is set up with 3000 PSI. What we do is pressurize all the gauges and pressurize the output, turn the gas off and make sure the pressure doesn't drop. So we basically measure that pressure decay. If it gets picked up, we'll take apart the regulator and fix that problem. So when you get a box like this, you know that the regulator has been tested. You open it up and it's gonna work straight away. The other thing is, um, you know, because we do such high level of testing and we're sure that the gauges are great, uh, we give a five year warranty on these regulators. So now, you know, with any of the, you know, Kegland branded ones, you know you've got a regulator, it's gonna last you many, many years to come and gonna give you lots of reliable service. That is pretty much it. If you guys got any other uh, requests for new stuff you wanna make or changes to regulators, definitely put it in the comments below. We always love to hear from our customers. A lot of the ideas and changes that we make are really from feedback from our valuable customers like yourself. The other thing we'd love you to do is sign up to our Facebook Homebrew Community Group. So go to that on Facebook, search Kegland Homebrew Community Group, you'll find it straight away and join that one. And of course, sign up to the, uh, to the YouTube channel, bottom right hand corner, hit subscribe now. And of course, hit the notification bell, ding ding. And that way you will get notified as soon as we launch new products or do videos like this. That's it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.